powering our tactical Hack 5 pineapple with solar, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitcher, and welcome back to Hack 5. In the last video, I showed you how I put together a tactical Hack 5 pineapple. This is basically a Wi-Fi pineapple with a battery and a couple accessories and a box. This makes it reasonably weatherproof, though I wouldn't want to submerge it underwater and gets us a nice all-included package that we could deploy just about anywhere without any extra accessories. However, what if you wanted to do a long-term engagement? What if you wanted to maybe drop this on top of a building with a drone, or maybe stick it to the back of a truck? Again, uh, uh, your own vehicle, of course. And you didn't want to have to worry about charging up that battery. Well, let's talk about solar. Just like Shannon and Darren did in the video about the solar suitcase pineapple using the Mark V many years ago, we're going to be looking at adding a solar panel to our project. Solar tech has gotten so much more efficient just in the last five, six years alone that we can use such a smaller panel and such a smaller battery to achieve the same results they did. Specifically, I'm using an Anchor solar panel. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just really like their products. Uh, this is a 15 watt panel. And I took it outside today to get some measurements. This panel is putting over 1.6 amps at 4.8 volts into our USB battery. Now, that works out to be almost 8 watts. Now, yes, it's a 15 watt panel, but I'm at a pretty northern latitude, and I didn't really put any effort into optimizing the angle at which the panel is mounted. And this is still plenty of power, because our pineapple is only using about 2.5 to 3 watts with the radios active, as you can see here. Now, if you're not too familiar with electricity and things like Ohm's Law and Watt's Law, uh, how I calculated the wattage is just voltage times current. Now, a lot of power meters will do this for you. Specifically, I'm using the Cytechi USB power meter because it's what I have kicking around, and it only shows you the voltage current and the uh, milliamp hour used, which is all great information, but I like working in watts because, as you can see, the voltage coming from the solar panel and the voltage coming from the battery are different so the amperage can't be, really be held one to one. So by converting it all into watts, we now know that the eight and change watts that we're getting out of the solar panel is more than the two and a half to three watts we're using. Now there is one issue. The anchor battery I was using in the last video doesn't support pass-through charging, which basically means that when you plug the solar panel into the battery and you plug the load into the battery, well, it's only gonna either charge or discharge. A lot of modern batteries, however, do support pass-through charging, so make sure when you're looking for a battery for a project like this that you find one with pass-through charging. Unfortunately, I have to stick with this one because I'm using a bit of a smaller case because I want this thing to be fairly discreet, and I'm going to just have to make it work. Now, the cool thing is this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, or a 10 amp hour battery, and if you do that times 5 volts, wait, no, you can't do it times 5 volts. USB batteries boost their internal voltage up from the 3.7 or so that the battery runs at to the 5 volts your device needs. So when you see a rating on a battery that says 10,000 milliamp hour or 26,800 milliamp hour, what you're actually seeing is the rating of the raw cell and not how much voltage you could get out. Not to count other things like the boost converter inefficiency or charging inefficiency. So in reality, you have about 10 amp hours at 3.7 volts, which is 37 watt hours. Accounting for a little bit of inefficiency in the charging and discharging and the conversion circuitry, you get about 35 watt hours of useful energy. Now this means that you're gonna get between 10 and 12 hours of runtime on this Pineapple Mark 7 with the USB dongle for five gigahertz plugged in. So if you use a bigger battery, like a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, you'll have more than enough power to get through a long night and even, you know, some cloudy day while still getting some power off the solar panel, which means you could deploy this pineapple for multiple days just about anywhere that gets at least a few hours worth of sun during the day. And that's basically it. We've powered a pineapple on solar and we can deploy it anywhere. Now, speaking of the pineapple, when I did that LTE episode a few episodes back, I mentioned that the beta firmware was needed to actually make the LTE module work. Now that beta 2.00 firmware is mainstream and stable. So make sure you go update your pineapple to the latest 2.00 firmware. If you're watching this video the day it goes up, make sure to go over and check out the celebration sale going on at the Hack 5 store because there's some really good deals going on as a celebration of launching the firmware as well as the new Cloud C2 update. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack 5. Glitch out.
Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.